What's up, bar listeners? It's your boy. And before we jump into this awesome bar podcast you're about to listen to, I want to tell you about something that's coming. October 27th, the bar podcast is going to start to release exclusive content. Yes, that's exclusive content for subscribers only. You'll continue to get the regular bar podcast every Tuesday, your favorite podcast, but also you'll get some new releases. Um, And what this is going to look like is we're going to call it Inside the Bar. And what that means is we're going to have the regular 30 minute conversation with our guests with our awesome guests we have every week. And then I'm asking my guests to stay on a little bit longer to ask more questions for me to ask them questions, them to ask me questions, kind of a behind the scenes green room feel. So if you want to be a part of those conversations, you want to hear that and also be exposed to all the exclusive exclusive things that I'm going to release, then sign up from now until October 27th for only five dollars a month is five dollars a month will get you uh, exclusive content access as well as many other opportunities. Um, After October 27th, the price will go up, but I want to let you guys know because you are the faithful bar listeners and I want to be faithful to you guys. So make sure you go into the show notes, click on the link and sign up for uh, Inside the Bar, the bar exclusive content. God bless. What's up, bar listeners? It's your boy. And before we jump into this awesome bar podcast you're about to listen to, I wanted to tell you about something that's coming. October 27th, the bar podcast is going to start to release exclusive content. Yes, that's exclusive content for subscribers only. You'll continue to get the regular bar podcast every Tuesday, your favorite podcast, but also you'll get some new releases. Um, And what this is going to look like is we're going to call it Inside the Bar. And what that means is we're going to have the regular 30 minute conversation with our guests that are awesome guests we have every week. And then I'm asking my guests to stay on a little bit longer to ask more questions for me to ask them questions, them to ask me questions, kind of a behind the scenes green room feel. So if you want to be a part of those conversations, you want to hear that and also be exposed to all the exclusive exclusive things that I'm going to release. Then sign up from now until October 27th for only five dollars a month is five dollars a month will get you uh, exclusive content access as well as many other opportunities. Um, After October 27th, the price will go up, but I want to let you guys know because you are the faithful bar listeners and I want to be faithful to you guys. So make sure you go into the show notes, click on the link and sign up for uh, Inside the Bar, the bar exclusive content. God bless. to the bar come on and pull up a seat and open up your bible what a wonderful feast the living bread and we're discussing what it means for the streets the inner cities and the burbs and every person we meet this is where we tell us world views that we hear from world news in light of the scripture we are here to serve you we're your source for resources to help you on your way as you battle mean forces this is for the people who can see the importance of sound theology and the scripture that support it and this is for the truth lovers biblically reforming preaching christ to the nations yeah welcome to the modern the reformation yeah the bar biblical and reformed welcome everybody to the bar it's your boy Dwayne in the building right back in here another tuesday super excited as always to be coming through your speakers through your earbuds wherever you listen to the bar we're grateful that you're listening and like i do every week i love to start the show by thanking the listeners uh this is actually a special week uh those that follow the bar podcast and the bar podcast network know that Just Thinking has made it into the top five of uh, Christian podcasts on iTunes. Uh, we're actually number two, beat out Joel Olstein and Stephen Furtick. So I think that's a win-win, um, but we're super excited about that. And like I do every Tuesday, I bring you an awesome guest. This guest I've been chasing for a while. Uh, we were able to finally get it locked down, and, and I'll let him talk about that. But I have on none other than Dr. Robert Godfrey. How you doing today, sir? I am good. And as I said to you, I have to congratulate you on being a true Calvinist, patient and <laughs> persevering. Because I've tried to run away because I'm technologically incompetent. But you caught me and I'm delighted to be here. And awesome, congratulations man. on the uh, on the good outcome. Yeah. Do they, do they tune in just because they think they're in a bar with you? Well, you know, I, I don't know if that's the draw, but that definitely was was part of my whole, you know, my whole scheme of things and thinking Good about that. You. Yeah, Good man. By, by God's grace, we're excited. And I would 
like my my good friend Daryl Harrison would really be upset with me if I didn't say on the air uh, that he really admires you, uh, Dr. Godfrey. Are you familiar with Daryl Harrison? I don't think I am. Don't tell All right. him that. No, well, well now you will be. Daryl, <laughs> uh, he actually last year got hired on at Grace U as Dean of Social Media. He's a prolific writer. Um, he's done a lot of work on the social justice uh, issues and, and things like that. One of the part oh, of the great. pins of the social justice and the gospel. And it's actually his podcast that I produce and manage that made the top five just thinking podcast, uh, Daryl and Virgil. So we're going to have to get That's you connected because cool. uh, him and uh, we, we got Chris on board. So we got to get you on board as well. But we're going to jump cool. into the show. And uh, Dr. Godfrey, I'm going to give you an opportunity to introduce yourself to my listeners. Those that might not know who you are, just kind of give them a little background. Anything you want to share, personal, professional, you got the floor to do that right here. Okay, well, the first thing is you have to bear in mind I'm an old man in, uh, in retirement. <laughs> I was uh, for uh, about 40 years a teacher and then president at Westminster Seminary, first in Philadelphia and then later in California, Westminster Seminary, California. And uh, since I retired, I've been working with Ligonier Ministries, and right now I'm chairman of the board and a teaching fellow for Ligonier. I've been doing nice. that <clears throat> about three years, both of those together. Uh, since R.C. Sproul died. And uh, so uh, I'm a church historian, a professional fellow. I'm a Californian, uh, fifth generation California on both my mother and father's side. So I always say I should be in a museum and I'm almost ready. <laughs> um, so anyway, there I am. Uh, that's awesome. in a nutshell. I'm, I'm a minister in the United Reformed Churches, which is uh, a small denomination uh, of the Dutch Reformed tradition, similar to American. Presbyterians, and um, uh, I'm married. I have three grown children, five grandchildren. That's covering a lot of territory quickly. Yeah, man. Yeah, no, that is awesome. That that is that is amazing. Um, so let's start with uh, let, let's back up a little bit. Let's get into the, to the seminary days. Um, uh, one of the questions I haven't asked this question in a while, but I, I would love to kind of get your take on it. Um. Tell me a little bit about uh, what they would call the whole, quote unquote, reform resurgence. Uh, I'm sure you were uh, teaching or uh, being the dean or something during that time. Do you recall it? And and, and what was that like? Uh, yes, I you know, I think um, we have slightly mixed feelings about the reform resurgence. Oh, yeah. Um, we we are delighted that people are getting back to the Word of God and discovering, as I think serious students of the Bible will discover, uh, the doctrines of grace, that we're saved by Christ alone, uh, through grace alone, by faith alone, that the Scriptures are alone, alone are the, um, uh, the authority in the life of a Christian. Uh, to have those things renewed and many people coming to them and appreciating them, we just delight in that. It's, it's a wonderful thing to see. As I say... I'm triumphalist enough to think that when you really study the Bible seriously, that's where you come to. Mm -hmm, I mean, it's mm -hmm. just all over the Bible. Right. Um, what I wish we saw more of is a resurgence of Reformed church life, um, mm. because I really think being Reformed is more than just the doctrines of grace. It's also mm -hmm. understanding how those doctrines of grace uh, play out not only in the disciplined life of an individual Christian, but also in the life of the Christian community. So I hope we'll see more of that coming along uh, yeah. as we continue to live. Yeah, no, that, that, that is a great point. Um, and, and, you know, I actually came in on, I would say the coattail of the resurgent. Um, and my background is I came out of the whole charismatic movement and, uh -huh. um, yeah. And so, and, and what I noticed and it, it, what you said really hit home because out of the charismatic movement, you, you're not tied to a church, you're tied to a personality. And so uh -huh. sometimes, you know, when I first came in, that was my thing. I was, you know, let me listen to everything, Dr. Spro, everything, John McCarthy, you know, and not necessarily looking right. locally. And that, that right. is a really good point about that. So, um, I guess just, uh, this is kind of out of my ordinary, for those that are in that space that are 
you know, following names, uh, what kind of what kind of advice or or what would you tell those that maybe listen to this podcast? And that's where their mindset is right now. Like, you know, they might click on this one because they see you. They enjoy all of your teachings on Ligonier. What what kind of what would be your your conversation with someone like that? Well, I think Christ really calls us into a family, and uh, you know, some families have stars in them, and uh, mm-hmm. it, it's fine to to follow someone who's a blessing to you that God has used to lead you deeper into His Word, um, but. But God calls us into a family where we see people face to face, where we interact with them week by week, where we're called to be accountable, uh, where um, there are elders that watch over our soul, and uh, uh, so it's it's that life of a community, a disciplined mm-hmm. community, which I think is is really crucial. And I I think part of the reason Christianity has become weaker in our time as a whole is because we have not been that disciplined community mm-hmm. and uh, uh, really born witness, not only to faith, but also to repentance. Right. Right. No, that, that is, that is excellent. Uh, excellent. Excellent. Um, and, so, and, you know, uh, yeah, I don't want to just sort of sound like I'm hammering on discipline, but <laughs> the other side of that is love. And, you know, real love is expressed Face to face in a community, you you, mm. you can't really love somebody on a screen the way you need to love people, and you need <laughs> to be in a community where they can love you and care for you, and where you can help care for others. And uh, that's so, what the local church needs to be. So Zoom church don't work, uh, Doctor Godfrey. That's it's not going to work for you. Not on Zoom. <laughs> no, no, sorry, no, not going to work for me. Uh, actually. Uh, We've been now home about three months, I think, yeah. uh, on TV, and uh, uh, we we have a preacher who every week comes on TV and says, uh, now this is okay for those of you who can't get to church, but it's not the real thing, and uh, we need to be reminded of that. Uh, yeah, for you know, sure. Uh, uh, we, we've got to watch our health, but we've also got to watch our spiritual health. That's right. That's right. That is, that's so good. I'm glad you touched on that, uh, for sure. So, um, you know, when 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 I say the name Dr. Godfrey, first thing I go to is church history. Um, and I know you have a recent series that uh, is going around Ligonier. I have some really, really good friends at Ligonier, obviously, because of the way I got in contact with you, all kind of ways. Um, so uh, I, and, and I apologize because I can't remember the name of the recent series they released. Are you do you know which one they released just now? And you want to talk about that a little bit? Well, they, they've uh, released a, a six-part series, um, which is a survey of the history of the church. And uh, um, it, it, it was a pleasure to do. It was 74 lectures. So uh, nice. for those who can't get enough of me, there it is. Um, <laughs> 74 lectures. And, uh, um, it's just survey of the church, I think, of church history. Mm-hmm. And we start with the time right after the apostles and come down to fairly close uh, um, as a as a former charismatic, you'll appreciate. I have a, a whole section on Amy Semple McPherson, my personal favorite <laughs> charismatic. And, nice. Uh, yeah, yeah, she's great. She's fascinating. And, but uh, so we try to bring it down to pretty close to the 21st century and uh, try to talk about what's going on now. But um, right, it, it it was a pleasure to do that, and I enjoyed it a lot. And Ligonier is wonderful to work with. They. Uh, they have great people doing the recording and helping out. And mm-hmm. um, so it was good. Awesome. Yeah, no, um, uh, I, I enjoy church history. And, and the beautiful thing about church history to me, um, for for me, is it helps with apologetics for me. Because mm-hmm. uh, charismatic, uh, you know, conspiracy theory, you know, people that like that was all in my background. And like, Mm. I remember people challenging me with stuff and me not even be able to sleep. But then when I found about church history and actually what was going on during that time, it, it had, it gave me all the answers that I could have been responding, you know, because there's so much that happened that, uh, you know, like I said, people just misunderstand. So what, what is before we, uh, yeah, before I get to my last question for the break, what, what would you say? Like somebody that's listening, what's one benefit of just you know learning about church his, church history and you know just listening to it, reading it? What what's one benefit of that, or or a couple of them if you want to get into it? 
Well, I, I, I think for a, especially American Christians in our time, we live in a time where there's not a lot of interest in history on the part of a lot of people, not a lot of knowledge of history on the part of a lot of people. And what that really means is we become prisoners of the present. Mm. And, and we're, there's a wonderfully liberating element to history that helps us see how did we get to where we are? How did we get to doing the things that we do? Um, and how do we um, try to dis- d- distinguish what's cultural in our expression of Christianity and what's biblical? Right. And, and how do we strive to be as biblical as possible? How do we try to liberate ourselves from the, the problems of uh, uh, cultural sins? All of that uh, is a big help in uh, uh, enabling us to think through. Right. That. Yeah, no, totally, totally agree with that. Totally agree with that. So right here, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. The definition of a creative in the Merriam-Webster Dictionary is marked by the ability or power to create, given to creating. Reformed Scratches Podcast with DJ Mike 5 is a podcast about Christian creatives who use their creativity to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. Interviews from cartoon artists, rappers, painters, musicians, dancers, filmmakers, actors, podcasters, DJs, and any and all Christian creatives. Be sure to listen to Reformed Scratches Podcast with DJ Mike 5. All right, we're back in here with uh, Dr. Godfrey. And Dr. Godfrey, this is the second half of the show. I know you're going to say this went by really fast because we're having fun. It did. Uh, <laughs> second, half, though, you have to, second half, you have to call me Bob. It'll make me feel young. Again. All right, let's go, Bob. Second half is all, it's, okay. it's me and Bob. Let's do it. So second That's half it, is the fun part. So that, here we go. Um, but okay. this is... Uh, this is I have three signature bar questions that I ask every guest, whether it's uh, Steve Lawson or even Chris or even Ligon. Ask all of these guys these three same questions. But for Ligonier folks, I have one extra question for you. So we're going to okay. save that extra question for last. First signature bar question is, what kind of music do you listen to? I listen mainly to classical music. Nice. And if I if I don't listen to classical music, then it's nineteen sixties folk music. Okay, sweet, sweet. Th- Next that thing. was my college music. So, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> you know, most of, most of us, I think, don't get much over the music we liked when we were young. So that's true. Uh, so just before I came on the air, I was listening to Joan Baez, but um, I'm I'm a big fan of uh, opera, so I listen to some opera and. Uh, so classical music, probably more than anything else. Got it. Got it. Got it. All right. Next signature bar question is what book or books are you currently reading? Well, because I'm retired and at home, uh, I decided <laughs> to reread my favorite novel, which is Tolstoy's War and Peace. So nice. I've, I've got 10 pages to go. Uh, which is saying a lot since it's 1,200 yeah. pages long. Um, that really, every time, I think I've read it about seven times, and uh, uh, every time I read it, I discover new things. Uh, every time I read it, I think, not to read this novel is to deprive yourself of just fantastic insight into people. And uh, so, anyway, that's my favorite novel. Um, I I don't know how many of your guests uh, mentioned the novel first. To to, to prove my credentials, my my favorite <laughs> Christian book outside the Bible is Calvin's Institutes in Christian Religion. Uh, I I think I think Calvin is the greatest theologian we've ever had, and mm. uh, we need to read him more. Nice, nice. So, so again, Bob, this is the bar. You don't have to prove your credentials here, man. Okay. Yeah, I can be honest with you. You, you can be honest, man. <laughs> exactly. This is the bar, man. You're, you're safe. This is okay. a safe place. Okay. You know, because yeah. you you can you can go ahead and tell us that you really like hip hop music for music. It's okay. I'm just kidding. I, I don't. I don't even like rock and roll. I'm just, I, I'm I'm just, just kidding. God, what can I say? 
<laughs> awesome. All right. Last, well, not the last thing is your question because you get the special one. But the next thing is your bar question is what podcasts or sermons do you listen to, if any? I really don't listen to podcasts. I have to confess. Um, That's fine. Um, again, it's part of just not being a very technological person. I've never been on Facebook. I mean, I'm just um, <laughs> one of these strange people. You know, uh, I still think computers are a brand new invention. Uh, <laughs> I uh, I'm so old that when I did my uh, doctoral dissertation, it had to be typed. There weren't even you know um, computers then. So. Uh, I'm trying to keep up, but I'm not doing a very good job. Uh, who do I like to, to listen to as preachers? Um, I, I'd love to listen to the preachers in my local church. I, I've nice. been uh, blessed with uh, really fine preachers um, uh, locally. Uh, of course, I like to listen to Sinclair Ferguson. You know, he has that mm-hmm. completely unfair advantage of uh, a Scottish accent. <laughs> right. Every, it makes everything sound so pious. Um, <laughs> Agreed. Um, I, I, I was impressed how um, vigorous a preacher R.C. Spohr was late, late in his life, um, mm. and uh, uh, how, how he loved the church, um, and uh, people responded to his preaching. So, oh, there's so many good preachers out there. It's uh, sure you immediately begin to think you're going to. I'm going to hang up and think, oh, I should have said. But right, anyway, there's, right. There's a, there's a few people. I will also brag on my two sons, who I think are very good preachers. Oh, nice. Yeah, they're both ministers and uh, serving the Lord and, and doing great jobs as preachers. Awesome, awesome. That is awesome to hear. And uh, you kind of segue to my last question. Everybody that's connected with Ligonier, I always ask for their favorite RC moment. Oh goodness, there are so many. Uh, I'm sure. Uh, I, I I don't know that I really should repeat this, but I I mentioned it. <laughs> and she said it was okay. Okay, as long as you got Wait. permission from her, because I talked to her yeah. too. As long as you got yeah. permission from her, you're good. She's the boss. He was he was uh, giving a lecture maybe just a year or two before he died, and uh, of course he was already struggling with several health problems and he put on some weight. And uh, he he was talking something about nudity in uh, his lecture, and he said it makes me think of how just recently I I got out of the shower and Vesta looked over at me, and Vesta said, um, "Well, I knew when I married you, I'd always be married to an athlete. I just didn't think it would be a sumo wrestler." And that was the story R.C. told about himself, and I right. just loved that. It, it, you know, he 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 just he had this wonderful ability to to take the gospel seriously, but not yes. take himself too seriously. Yes. And uh, um, the other side of it, I, I remember one of my favorite moments was I think this happened more than once, but I was there once when we were doing a question and answer session, and uh, somebody asked a question that. Um, sort of revealed they really hadn't gotten the, the reform message very clearly yet. And uh, uh, there was this long pause. Nobody knew exactly what to say. And, and R.C. looked out at the crowd, you know, almost 5,000 people. And he says, what's the matter with you people? <laughs> <laughs> Repeat. The whole place just broke up. Yeah. So, uh, uh, nice. it, it, it was wonderful. Yeah. It was awesome. Wonderful. Yeah, we, we definitely uh, miss Dr. Spro. Uh, big influence on this podcast, uh, on my life, uh-huh. um, on just the, the whole idea of starting a podcast came from listening to Renewing Your Mind uh, mm-hmm. in, in, in mm-hmm. RefNet. So definitely uh, much love and respect for Ligonier. Got a lot of friends there and, uh, and was glad to have you on the show, Bob. And so to end this up, I'm going to give you the floor, man, to close us out. Any words of encouragement, anything you want to tell my listeners, uh, any books coming out? I don't know if you got any announcements or anything, uh, but you got the floor well, to did, do that right Did here. you see that um, Ligonier has taken the plunge and just released my, um, I think it's 24 lectures on the Book of the Revelation. So if, ah, you, uh, nice. if you want to know what the Book of the Revelation is all about, 
um, there's the place to go. And I'm sure I'll lose a lot of friends, but it's a great book and uh, uh, a great <laughs> encouragement to us uh, in these times. I've, I've just been looking at the Psalms, you know, I love the Psalms and uh, was just studying Psalm 4. And, um, it's just such a beautiful uh, statement of the psalmist for us in times like these, uh, verses 7 and 8 of Psalm 4. You have put more joy in my heart than they have when their grain and wine abound. In peace I will lie down and sleep, for you, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. Uh, what a wonderful promise from our God that in Him we'll have joy and peace and safety and be able to live for Him and serve Him. Yes, and sir. Christ uh, reigns over all. Amen, brother. That is, yes, sir. That is an excellent way to close the show. Again, thank you for taking time to come on the show. And uh, definitely. Uh, well, we I'll be glad to do it again, and you won't have to work so hard. <laughs> you, you make it so hard. See, there you go. There you go. So that, yeah, okay. that is awesome. I really appreciate that. I really do. To the bar yes, listeners, sir. thank you guys for listening to the bar, your favorite podcast. Make sure you check out everything on the bar podcast. Go to the bar podcast.com. And if you want to hear all the podcasts on the bar podcast network, just click on the network tab and you see all the podcasts on the network, as well as go to the bar gear.com. Pick you up a hat, beanie shirt, anything with bar on it. Represent your favorite podcast until next time you guys. God bless. And we are out. <laughs>